Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's video series, we would be understanding more about Salesforce from a developer point of view. So for today, we would be discussing the design approach for your navigation bar component in your LWC. So basically, this is an extension of the random project that we picked. So just we are trying to uh, cope up with that, that how we could approach things. So yes. Uh, but before writing code, na, uh, we would be getting some insights about how we should plan the structure of your navigation bar. Because if we have a clear picture in mind, na, so it is easy for us to lay out things in a proper fashion instead of like, okay, these things, uh, if we don't think about uh, this uh, before coding. Na, so at that time, uh, we are not uh, getting the uh, updates right so we cannot work on the implementation updates or it could be a hectic process to change the things okay so that's why uh, one must think before writing code okay so uh, basically what is the reference that we are taking as for navigation bar is the amazon login page uh, or the amazon website so basically uh, if you could see that uh, these things I have highlighted the things, uh, the navigation bar in red and displayed some lines. Why? Because these are structured in a way or if we are to structure these uh, in our way, so how we would be doing this with the help of grids. Okay. Grids give you advantage to structure your lightning web component into uh, the way you like or as per the design guideline because we are not just referring to the large screen or medium screen we are referring from the mobile view to the desktop or the larger site view so that it is responsive uh, that gives a better customer experience right so uh, moving further our approach as we discussed earlier uh, would be the slds grids okay so now what is the importance of SLDS grid? Why not lightning layout or why not something else? Okay, we should discuss that. The SLDS grid system, this basically provides us a flexible device agnostic layout system. Basically, it means that it is compatible with the device sizes. So it has features to control the alignment, order, flow and gutters. Okay. So basically it helps us to determine that what is the layout, how things should be placed and what should be the correct order. Like uh, in large size we want uh, uh, five columns and in the small size we, uh, won't, don't, we just want only one single column uh, vertically. Uh, so yeah, we could uh, work over all those things with the help of SLDS grids. So that is the most beneficial advantage as we could compare this grids with any other uh, layouts. Okay, so let us see this example. See, basically these are three columns that are stacked each other. Okay, so like in your HTML, uh, there is a concept of floats, right? In our SLDS, there is a concept of SLDS grid. So basically, uh, you write float left, float right, just uh, in the same sense, you would be writing SLDS grid. So basically, if you are to start a grid, you would write SLDS grid. For our SLDS gutters, just uh, ignore them for now. Just consider that SLDS grid. If you want something to be stacked horizontally, uh, you want to write SLDS grid. And inside you would write div class that is SLDS column. So that it, did, it would identify that I am the first column. And inside I have just used a span tag that is one. Uh, for the next column, I would be using div class is SLDS column that is two. And for the three also, I would be doing same SLDS column and inside I could write three and I could go up to n times, right? Don't worry, we would be also implementing this as well. But yes, for an insight point of view, we should know the idea and the basic difference approach in your SLDS grids, right? So now we would be talking about your column widths. So what are your column widths and why are they necessary? So sometimes it is not that key. we are only restricted to equal sharing of your layout. Okay, sometimes we want a layout to be pretty larger and some section to be smaller enough comparatively. So how do we deal with such things is using the help of SLDS grids only. See, 
I have written SLDS grid as I told you earlier as well that in order to create a SLDS grid you have to write SLDS dash grid. Inside what you would be doing is SLDS column and previously we were only restricted to SLDS column but now we are using the SLDS size property as well that is SLDS dash size underscore 2 of 3 that means 3. So basically if we see the rightmost uh, thing now that is 3. So that means our screen is divided into three items. Okay, we could have three items uh, over to our screen, and out of which our first item that would be taking the size two times and two third of the uh, main screen, and the rest items would be taking the size one third. Okay, I hope this is pretty clear. If not, you would be um, clear with this example also. Okay. Now this white screen is your entire screen, right? So now what you want is you want to partition this among the three. So you would write our div class SLDS grid. So see, this is the first part inside this red. This would be your second part and this would be your third part. So if uh, these are your sections, so all are taking equal amount of size 1 of 3 1 of 3 1 of 3 all goes to 3 right so in the similar fashion but we could have this this section 1 could have occupied two column spaces out of 3 so this red would have stacked over this yellow part and there would be only two parts section 1 and section 3 right in this way we could arrange our columns okay now in the same way see uh, there are uh, various examples like 1 of 6 uh, the thing that is in the denominator right this defines the number of columns that you would be having and see 1 of 6 1 of 6 so there are 6 columns in here similarly this goes to 1 of 4 1 of 4 so 4 columns 3 columns 2 columns and the 1 column okay this is our SLDS grid layout approach okay now what is the importance of your SLDS gutters I told you right that forget about the SLDS gutters for a minute till then we are discussing about the SLDS grid. But now it's the exact time to understand the concept of SLDS gutters. So basically gutters help you to add the padding. Okay. By applying SLDS gutters, this will add the vertical and horizontal paddings and spacings so that your content and your uh, uh, borders uh, to the margins are stacked equally okay so equal share of your padding is allowed to each side okay and that is the importance of SLDS gutters if you don't want SLDS gutters you could simply write SLDS grid no uh, uh, it would work perfectly right so now if you are seeing this uh, so this is a vertical grid see 1 2 and 3 these are not spaced horizontally these are spaced vertically so how these things are met? Can we have a vertical grid? Yes. Guys, we can have a vertical grid in this SLDS. So how this is possible? See, everything is the same. SLDS grid, SLDS column. But when we are defining the SLDS grid, the SLDS grid vertical, if we write SLDS grid vertical, it would stack your things vertically. Okay, just the basic difference. Nothing else. Everything remains the same. We do also have nested animations or we could have some nested grid animations in your SLDS as well like the ordering property. Uh, so in particular uh, large screen devices we want uh, some columns to be stacked to the right and when we come over to the small size so we could have the, uh, la uh, the thing that is to the right we could have the things stacked to the left as well. So all these things guys we would be covering in the code itself because this would be too theoretical for be, uh, for all us to understand. So we would be getting updates in our next video. So in the next video we would be having a practical design approach for your navigation bar component and I would be creating that component so as to give you an insight about how things go and how we should lay out the things. Okay. So till then thank you for your time.